today, my wizard friends, we will be casting a powerful spell called Casting Resin. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of casting resin. We're going to powder our silicone mold, then mix and pour a two-part resin, then after it cures, we have our solid cast resin figure. I'll also explain how pressure casting works. This is a great technique for getting clean, bubble-free casts. This is a companion piece to my last video where I explained how to pour a silicone mold. If you like, you can check out that link in the description. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification thing, and let's go. The first thing I'm going to do is dust baby powder inside the mold. Talcum powder will help prevent the resin from sticking to the silicone, so it pops out a little bit easier. It also provides a bit of a heat shield, so it can also prolong the life of your mold. Talcum powder is also a surfactant. Liquids have surface tension. This is what allows a drop of water to hold that round shape. When you add a surfactant to a liquid, the surfactant weakens the surface tension of the liquid so the liquid can spread better. So in theory, lowering the chances that little air bubbles will form. I have a couple different brushes specifically for this. This big fluffy one for the main areas and then this smaller pointy one for the harder to reach areas. For the baby powder, I like to use Johnson & Johnson's original formula. Lately, there's been a lot of concerns on whether talcum powder is healthy for you and a lot of this is because there's an uncertainty concerning the purity of talc. Uh, the mineral talc exists in mines that could potentially contain asbestos, but according to Johnson & Johnson, all of their talc is pharmaceutical grade. Then I'll take it outside and blow a little air into it to remove any extra powder. Make sure you get it out of all the little details, otherwise it could affect your casting. Sometimes I have to go in there with a tiny little brush and stab the brush in to really make sure that I get it out. So now I'm ready to rubber band this thing closed. I am a big fan of the rubber band method. I have a friend who swears by packaging tape, but I tried it and it just did not work for me. I feel like with the rubber bands, I can have a lot of control over how tight I want it and where I want the pressure. And they also work great with these block molds because you have these big symmetrical flat sides. You want to find that happy point between it not being so tight that it distorts the mold, but not being too loose where the resin will leak out. I always kind of lean towards the loose side and get it just tight enough to hold the resin in. And you can always make adjustments after you pour one. So if you pour one and it looks a little squished or deformed, maybe on the next one use uh, less rubber bands. Also a nice thing about block molds is there's a, a set of three parallel faces that can all be banded, which gives you a little extra pressure from different directions and will also prevent your molds from distorting. Just make sure you collect a big box of rubber bands so you can always pick and choose uh, the size that you need. I always like to look inside of the mold too because you can see where the two halves line up. and You can also see if they're not lining up perfectly. And a lot of the times after I get the rubber bands on, I'll come back in and kind of do like a really slow crawl up to make sure uh, that they fit well together. So I'll do that on one side, then I'll come back. You know, I don't know if you can see it there, but you can see right there, it's a little off. But if I just push that one side in, uh, then they seam up a little bit better. So if you're fortunate enough to have a, a big pour spout, you can look in there and get a good idea of how tight the seal is uh, and in turn how much cleanup you're going to have after you pour the resin. So now we can mix and pour the resin. I'm using a product called Smoothcast 300 by Smoothon. This is a two-part pourable resin. Basically you mix up part A and part B in equal amounts by volume and after it cures you end up with a uh, solid white hard plastic resin. There's always this piece of paper inside the box that has an overview of the product as well as all the technical data. Uh, there's a couple things here that I think are really important to point out. Uh, the pot life and the cure time. Pot life is the amount of time you have to mix it before it starts to set up. So you want to get it mixed and poured into your mold within three minutes, preferably a little bit sooner. The cure time is how long it takes to fully harden. So after you pour it, 
technically you can pop it out of the mold in 10 minutes. I'm going to show you two different setups I use for casting. One for casting smaller pieces, uh, something like this, and then another setup that's just a little bit different for casting pieces that are just a little bit larger. For the smaller pieces, I use these 16 ounce transparent party cups, both to measure and mix the resin. Make sure you get the ones uh, with the little ridges here. These are perfect for measuring uh, the volume. First thing I need to do is figure out how much resin I'm going to need for this figure. Usually what I'll do is I'll give it a good guess, then I will add a little bit extra on top of that. And then I always have these little tiny molds uh, hanging out on the side. So whatever resin is left over, I'll just fill these little molds up with. And then the next time I pour, if it was too much resin, I could kind of guesstimate how much was too much, come down and just keep doing that until I get the exact amount that I need. A second option would be to take this mold and rubber band it super tight, uh, pour water in there, and then pour that water into a little bucket, and then take the water in the bucket, split it in half, and that'll give you a little bit closer of an estimate. Uh, just remember, before you pour the resin, you really need to clean out every little uh, drop of water out of the mold because resin and water do not mix. So let's say I do that water thing and it turns out that the water goes up to this little black line here after I split it in half. Now I know that this particular figure will always be one, two, three lines from the bottom. Uh, and then I could come into my little notebook, make a little note of that, three from the bottom, and now I always know how much resin I need and I have this super simple measuring container. So now let's do this for real. I have my disposable gloves, I have my respirator, I have my mixing cups and a sharpie, I have some tongue depressors to stir the resin, I have the rubber banded mold and the resin. Always make sure you give your resin a good shake before using. Uh, but do this the night before you cast. When you shake it, it gets super bubbly, and you really want all of those bubbles to settle down before you pour the resin. I always pressure cast my resin with uh, this setup right here. And I will explain how all of this works, but um, since most viewers, I imagine, don't have that stuff, I am just going to run through the whole thing first. Just uh, super simple. So I know that this figure barely comes up to this first little notch here. So I've marked my cups accordingly. I have one from the bottom, part A on top. One from the bottom, part B on top. I put links in the description for Smoothon's gallon kit and pint kit. I always buy the gallon kit because of the price break and because I know that I'll use it up in a few months. It has a really long shelf life, but I've noticed after a few months, part A uh, starts to get a little bit funky, a little discolored, but uh, the important thing is it will always still mix and cure. Just make sure you keep the lid on and don't let moisture in. Part A is the catalyst, which will react with moisture. Part B is a lot thicker than part A, so I always pour part A into part B, just because it's going to pour faster and I'm trying to do all this stuff as fast as I can. And after I measure out equal amounts, I always add just a tiny bit more of part A to factor in the uh, liquid that gets stuck on the surface of the cup. The nice thing about this equal parts by volume measurement thing is that um, it doesn't have to be exact. If it looks like it's close, it's gonna work. The purpose of pressure casting your resin is so you remove all the air bubbles from the resin so you get uh, clean castings with no air bubbles. Since I'm not pressure casting, I'm going to do this thing where I kind of vibrate and wiggle the mold a little bit to try to loosen up any air bubbles, uh, freeing them up to kind of float up to the top here and hopefully pop. So the resin is going to pour into the mold and fill the figure up like this. I really need to make sure that air bubbles don't get stuck right in this area here. So part A goes into part B and then I start to stir while getting the last drops of part A out. Try not to whip it up when you stir it. You don't want to add bubbles into the resin. I'll stir it for about 20 seconds. I know that I have three minutes till it starts to set up, but I don't want to wait too long. I want to get it in there as soon as possible so I can vibrate it a little bit. 
I used to vibrate all my molds with a vibrator that you would use on your back. Uh, I also knew this one guy that had a little, he made this little vibrating table. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. I would just say whatever works for you. First I fill it about one third full and then lean it forward as far as I can while tapping it on the table. And this is really targeting any bubbles that might be under the chin of the figure. Just be really careful not to squish or distort your mold. You don't want to pop those seams out of place. Then I'll fill it two thirds full and tap it a little bit more. At this point I could feel it heating up in the cup so I know that it's close to setting. Always wear a respirator. As soon as you mix part A and part B, a chemical reaction and a heat reaction are taking place. You can't smell it, but if you look close, you can see the little vapors coming off the resin. I linked a respirator with cartridges that are specific for gas and vapor. So I'm shining a little light on the resin here and I've sped the video up so you can see all of the little bubbles rising to the top. So at the three minute mark, the resin will kick and you'll see it turn white. It always starts from the center because that's where the most heat is. It takes a little bit longer to hit the edges because it's cooler there because the silicone is absorbing some of that heat. And you can see here it takes a really long time right where the resin has pulled out at the top. And uh, this was a seven minute video, so I sped it up considerably. So now we can pull the resin out of the mold. According to the data sheet, you can pull it out after 10 minutes, but I usually let mine sit in the mold for at least 30 minutes. If your piece has thin parts like arms or legs, those parts can take longer to cure. The curing process is mass dependent, so the larger amount of resin means more heat produced, which means the mixture heats up faster and cures faster. If you have thin masses like on arms and legs, the heat is spread over a thinner area, so less heat equals a slower cure time. A figure that's this thick, I don't think you'd have a problem uh, with pulling it out at the 10 minute mark. But usually when I'm in casting mode, I am usually pouring a bunch of molds so I'm not really losing any time by just letting them sit a little bit longer. But that whole theory can work both ways. I actually like to pull this piece out of the mold when it's still a little bit soft. The mold's a bit more complex and I've broken a lot of legs here because the resin was so fragile and brittle from letting it completely cure. So if it's a little bit soft, there's a little bit of wiggle and give and take uh, that make it easier to peel off this mold. So here's the piece out of the mold. You can see here that there's a tiny bit of flashing uh, to clean up on both sides where the seam was, but this is not that big of a deal. This could probably be cleaned up in a couple of minutes. You can also see that no bubbles got trapped or formed uh, underneath the neck here. So I would say this is a successful casting. Sometimes you'll find these thin little pieces of flashing left over along the cut marks. I'll lightly scrape these out with a little dental tool and then brush it off uh, with a cotton rag before I pour the next one. I used to use Smooth-On's Universal Mold Release instead of the baby powder and it worked great. But with the spray, I always had to wash the resins with soap and water prior to painting, but with the baby powder, no washing was needed. I just go straight to painting. So the baby powder just made the whole process a little bit more efficient by eliminating that step. So now I am going to explain the pressure casting process. In the future, I'll have a separate video for this because it's just a lot of information to unpack, but I will go over the basics here and at the same time explain my setup for pouring larger amounts of resin. So I'll run through everything here and then we'll do the whole thing in real time. So the first thing you do is place your silicone mold into the pressure pot. Then you mix up your resin Pour your resin into the mold. Then you clamp down the lid so it's totally sealed. Then you have an air compressor here that you turn on and it will push air through this little tube into the pot until this little gauge here reads uh, anywhere from 40 to 50 PSI. That's pounds per square inch of air that you are compressing into this pot and into the resin. And then you just leave the resin in there until it's cured. And in theory, what's happened is all of the little air bubbles have imploded and disappeared from the air pressure. So you get a casting that is completely bubble free. So here's what I do when I pressure cast. I have the resin in the mixing cup set up on the table here. And then right below it, I have the compressor and the pressure pot. And whenever I pressure cast, I like to do several molds at a time. 
Um, so you can see here in the pot I have two medium sized molds and one small mold. They've all been powdered and rubber banded and ready to go. These three pieces are going to take a little bit more resin than that last piece. You can see I've marked the cups here. Uh, six from the bottom on um, both cups, part A on one cup, part B on one cup. And the big difference between this pour and the last pour is I can't just pour one cup into the other and mix it because there's just too much resin. So basically what I end up doing is pouring both cups into this yogurt container and mixing them in that container there. And then I've upgraded my stick uh, to this little mixing stick here. This little mixing stick is great. It's got these little holes in it that are specifically designed for mixing liquids. So let's do it. I'm running this video in real time so you can see exactly how long it takes me to do this. The challenge here is to mix the resin, pour it into the mold, secure the lid, and then get the air into the pressure pot all within three minutes before the resin starts to kick. If you're just starting out and you feel like you need a little extra time, you can get a resin called Smoothcast 305. This has a pot life of seven minutes, so you get four extra minutes to get everything done. The only downside is the cure time is 30 minutes, so technically you have to wait 30 minutes before you can pull it out of the mold. And there's a whole bunch of details and tips and tricks to making this whole process uh, work smoothly, but that's all going to have to wait for the deep dive video. But if you have the right tools, the learning curve is not that steep. And if you've been casting resin without this process, I guarantee you that after you try it, you'll wonder why you did not do it long ago. The amount of time that you save on cleanup is just ridiculous. So the amount of time it took me to get everything done here was a little less than two minutes. You don't really want to wait until that exact three minute mark because it starts to thicken up uh, before that time. So two minutes is a good amount of time. I still have one full minute before it kicks where the pressure can do its thing on the bubbles. Then I'll just leave the molds in there for about 10 minutes until I know that they're fully cured. And then I'll roll the pot outside and I'll release the air pressure. Remember that any gas and vapor from the resin is inside that pot, so wear your respirator when you do this. So when comparing this figure that was pressure cast with this figure that was not pressure cast, they are virtually identical. Uh, neither of the figures have uh, any air bubbles. But like I said before, this is a very simple figure to cast. It's almost a straight shot down with the resin. Um, so a figure like this, you probably don't need to pressure cast it. But 80% of my pieces are not that simple. Um, these two pieces that were just in that pressure pot that I pulled out, I would expect to find all sorts of little bubbles on the back side here that kind of got trapped if I didn't use the pressure caster. This piece here, which is poured upside down, I assume would just be filled with little air bubbles here that got trapped. Um, this piece here I used to cast without the pressure caster and this whole bottom was just a nightmare. This just looked like a, a loofah sponge. Um, and then this piece which I do pressure cast, you can see the pressure caster did not even eliminate all of the little bubbles. So I'm assuming without the pressure caster this would just also look like a, a loofah sponge. And then here's one more example. Uh, that we just kind of finished. This one uh, I just cast without the pressure caster and you can see there's a little air bubble right behind the ear there. There's another air bubble right behind that ear. And there's another little air bubble right in the nose there. Um, then in that pressure pot that we just cast, this one was that little piece that I just pulled out no air bubbles. So, uh, you know, all of those little air bubbles have to be filled and sanded, which is just an absorbent amount of time that can be eliminated with the pressure caster. You could click the link here if you want to see part one in this series where I go over how to make the silicone mold. And you can always look in the description for links to all of the tools and materials I use in this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button or the subscribe button or even leave a comment. All of that stuff helps YouTube's algorithm push this out to a wider audience. And you can always check my workout on my Instagram at Steve Ferreira and my website steveferreira.com. Until then, thanks for watching and I will see you next video.
Thank you.